Hello everybody, thank you so much for being here whether live or later on in the chat and let's already see who's there we have goddess ganja nana your mama and we have steve and tina oh a different icon from you today steve and tina so thank you all for being here and here is a welcome for you all So thank you very much for being here. Let's see what we've got going on. Goddess Ganja Nana says, hi Cyprus. She's always called me Cyprus, love it very much. Stephen Tina, morning dawn, saying hello to Goddess. Goddess, hello to Steve. Steve saying, phone charging. I'll be watching on TV till the phone is charged. Bless you. Are you home? You must be home then from Mexico. Um, so thank you all for being here. I've just got back in time. Don't forget it's Mike's birthday today. So pop on his channel and say hello to him. I'll just type in his channel for you. Mm. And don't forget his channel name is also our property name. So if you want to go on Google Maps, type in Olive Farm Retreat Cyprus and you will see exactly where I am yes <laughs> you will find out where we are so you can see my location <clears throat> and if you want to see more about the actual location where I am go on my channel's playlist and I think I've called the playlist mountainside walks and all the walks on that playlist are from my house. I don't get in a car and go somewhere and walk. They are all, if you come and visit me, they are all walks. So if you like a particular one and you're planning on coming and visiting me, then write down, I've put a letter of the alphabet for each one. And I've got my own record of where I went which direction and what I saw on the walk so I remember them so if you like a particular walk write down oh do walk R can you take me there and I will take you on walk R some are part ones and parts two if I walk a long long way then obviously I divide it up so the videos aren't long awesome says Ganja Nana and you are awesome too thank you so much for being here Okay, I've just got back, as I say, it's Mike's birthday. We have just got back. I knew I'd be back in time, but not this late. For me now, it's um, probably about 20 to 6 now, about 20 to 6 in the evening. So we've just got back, and part of our day out today, I wanted to go to charity shops. Now, they're very few and far, uh, not many of them in cyprus unless you go to somewhere touristy like pathos which is a long way away from us and i did do a video recently i think it might have just popped up today because i've scheduled a couple of videos so sometimes i'm not sure what i've posted i'm sure it was posted for today and it was a charity haul i got before we went to two charity shops one was quite rubbish like more of a junk shop and we i did actually get a book from there which you'll see in the video the second one was awesome but unfortunately it's too far away from us that we wouldn't go past there again we went there for um a place mike wanted to see if he could get his camera repaired so we went a long way that was awesome today we have been to a two charity shops now there was one i particularly wanted to go to which they've moved if you remember one of my cats fossil is actually from a cat sanctuary called malcolm cat sanctuary and i have done videos on that so when i do the video on the charity shop i went to today which is a malcolm cat sanctuary charity shop which is nowhere near malcolm cat sanctuary then i will put in the description the videos of the cat sanctuary so you can learn about that and my cat fossil is from there uh we went to one charity shop prior to that because it was nearby mm, rubbish and then it's mostly clothes and don't really buy clothes and then the well, not much else and the second one the malcolm cat sanctuary one was awesome we bought tons of stuff and literally i came home quickly filmed it always as i was unpacking it 
Um, so that will get edited soon. Now, one of the things I bought there, I think goes very nicely into this segment of today's live. As I say, we've built loads of stuff, so I'm not going to show it all to you now because I filmed it. One thing, I'm kind of looking out for cross-stitch stuff and maybe embroidery stuff, simpleton things for me, like thread. And, oh, I haven't got it here because it's in my keep box. I've just quickly sorted some of this stuff out. I picked up what we call in cross-stitch, maybe in embroidery too, what I call bobbins. Now, I make this to wind your thread on, and I make my own normally from old birthday cards and Christmas cards. But there was a pack about this thick of these bobbins in this cardboard box. And I said to her, oh, how much are those? And she said, oh, no, no, she said, that whole box you have to buy the whole box it's oddments so i quickly started looking through it and there were some needles i'm on the lookout for a few needles of my own because i keep using mike's needles uh some bits of material also so i've shown you that in the video but going through it all now at home this was the size box she said it's two euros and it was full but there's stuff in here I cannot identify. So if any of you know what any of this stuff is, I've shown it in the video, but obviously I want more people to see it. If you can identify any of this stuff, this is now just sitting in the box because I don't want to throw it away till I know what it is. If you identify it and I don't want it, then if you want it, let me know and I'll post it to you. The first thing is this. Looks like sort of a bomb from the war. <laughs> Now, I'm guessing it comes apart. So I'm guessing you put some sort of yarn or something like that in there. There's a hole in the top. And I'm guessing it's some sort of weaving procedure. Not like a pom-pom, but that kind of thing maybe. But I don't really know what it is. So if you can ID that for me. This is like a what's in this box that now i don't know what goes with what if any of these things are separate components or or if they're all part of other things i've been trying to put them together hey shirley's in the house guys go and check out glitter world channel and go along pop in and say hello to glitter world <laughs> Shirley saying perhaps this is to put dog treats in. It's very small, um, possibly. I mean, I don't know. It could be used for that and they roll it round. Possibly. This was all a craft box, but it doesn't mean to say it's all crafts in there. Oh, it wasn't Shirley said it. Beg your pardon. It was Ganja Nana said it. Um, ah, <laughs> Steve, Steve and Tina's on, on, uh, online properly now um yeah possibly that as i say most of it is craft stuff but who knows then there was this now as i say they might just be junk thrown in they might be part of something else i show you <laughs> who knows bear in mind it should be craft but not necessarily i suppose it's something you could wind things on but it looks like it sits on something else there's that um Oh, might put this together. Now, I think this is some sort of clamp. Some sort of clamp, but might put it into this. Oh, I've taken it out now. I don't know how it went. But you put it into this somehow. Oh, Steve, I've got an update on the embroidery bike. Um, he did put it into there. So he's saying you could clamp it onto a table for something. He said maybe a projector or a light or something like that. So we kind of think we figured that out. There's this. Now, I'm not a sewer. And it says button markers. Button markers. So I'm guessing it's when you make clothes, you can um, make the buttonholes the right distance apart. It's got a ruler on the top and bottom. The top is inches or quarter, 
quarter inches. The bottom is something else, another measurement. And then this funny shape here is 45 degree angle mitre. Oh, centimetres is the other bit. Now, I don't want something like this. So if you see anything you want, then let me know and I will send it to you. There's nothing big here. So I'm happy to post free of charge. We have these. Now, I'm guessing these are um, feet. Feet for something. I'm guessing these are feet, but they're all different. So I'm guessing these are feet for some things. So again, I can't see any use for those for now. Oops, that's on the floor now. Wait, uh, there. There's these. Now there's two of these. I think they're not hard metal. To me, they look something like some form of buckle or something. They've got... I haven't really got a knobble there. It looks like a knobble. It's not. It's two of these. There. Oh, Shelley's making bread. <laughs> Ganja wants some. Steve says, just got back from holiday. Bit of sore throat. Otherwise, all good. How about you? I'm doing an update on my lupus. I filmed it, edited it. Now, there's this. Now, this is like um, iron, like really heavy. I don't know if it's iron. I'm just trying to say something really heavy. There's this. <laughs> Looks like a sword. But it was in the box of, you know, like coat toggles, like buttons that are toggles. But it's really, really heavy. There's that. There's three of these. <laughs> three of these. These are plastic. Plastic. Uh, there's two marbles. If any of you are into marbles, I know if you know marbles, you know old ones and new ones. So there's marbles. Two marbles, random. Oh, there's this. <laughs> there's this. Does that fit that other round thing? No. No, not at all. And this says... Uh, cover glass against direct sunlight. So I think it's some sort of magnifying glass cover. You pick it up and put it on. Cover glass against direct sunlight. Hmm. Uh, ah, Ganja says exactly what I've got at the end of my curtain rod. Is that these you're talking about? Which one? Are you talking about this one? Say number one. Or this? Say number two. Number one. Would you talk about that? Or that? Number one. Number two. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, randomly, there was a hairnet. I know this is a hairnet because when you're a ballerina, you have these for dancing. So it's for your bum when you have your hair in a bun. Number two. Cool. Thank you. Perfect information. We had this, which obviously I'm thinking was the legs of when you stand like um, a laptop or a camera up. I think that's like the legs of that. I'm pretty sure that doesn't go with anything else. There was good stuff. <laughs> this is just the junk at the bottom. Now, this, I'm thinking, my mum had a bigger one of these. I'm thinking this is like for darning your socks. I think they called them mushrooms. And then you pull the heel of your sock over it and you darn. I'm going to say that's that. The bottom's missing. Now, my mum's one had a screw bit on the bottom and you'd keep your darning needles in it. So I'm going to say that's what that is. If you think it's something else, tell me. It's got ribs round here and it's smaller. But then it might be like a travel one or something. Oh, the one before. The one before. Let me show you again. Uh, this. You're saying this. This one. This one. 
And that's at the end of, oh, we've got hair on it now. You say that's at the end of your curtain rods. What I've got at the end of my curtain rod. That's interesting because there's two of them. So that kind of makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, what else was random? I put a few things away that were random, um, but I can use them in my way. No. <laughs> Ganja, you're messing with me today. And then there were lots of like um, trimmy bits, lots of trimmy bits, weird, weird trimmy bits. Oh, we have Ashley in the house. Ashley's Allotment Adventures. Go and check out his. So there's that. Yes, there was this. As I say, lots of odds and ends, but I can use them. Looks like a miniature doorknob. I don't know how well you can see that. Miniature doorknob. Very pretty. Obviously, you can use it on a drawer or whatever. Lots of things like that, random bits. There was a back of an earring, and I've just lost the back of one of my earrings. So if it fits, that's great. There's these kind of, I don't know how well you can see it. It's got a butterfly on it it's because i've got a really bad lighting situation going on today let's turn it it's got butterfly there you go it's some sort of pin i don't think they're cufflinks because you wouldn't have a butterfly's cufflinks they got two pins like that on two pins so i'm not sure quite what they're for if you know what they're actually for, I think there's a couple of those. There's two, which is strange, a matching pair. I wouldn't say cufflinks. Ooh, let's go on the comments so I can see what you're saying to me. Uh, where are we? Oh, the heavy one. The heavy one, says Ganja. Good afternoon. Lovely. Yeah, lots of bits. But as I say, oh, there's these sort of things. I've had these before. Are they to kind of, when you've got a shirt or something, you put on each side and hook it over a button? I've had these sort of things before. I don't really know what they're for. I don't know. But loads of those sort of things. As I say, back of an earring. These are all the random things. Random things. As I say, I quickly sorted out what I could keep. And then things I didn't know what they were. Um, you've got things like loads of safety pins but i think that was most of the random stuff that i'm just looking through that i didn't really know what on earth they were and then there was weird things like this can you see there yeah. <laughs> i think these are something you put like smelly things like lavender or things like that in the bottom and you hang it in your wardrobe to get rid of like uh, musty smell i think things like that so that was the random things that i wanted your help with and thank you for helping if you know as i say this is the thing that i'm really i'm i thought it was for some sort of weaving wall or something i don't know so where you've got that and i thought you could pull it out and do something i don't know but again just saying perhaps it's for dog treats and they roll it round and the treats fall out it comes apart too easily that's my only thought of that that a dog would just like knock it open and that would be it so i don't know i don't know and being in a craft thing who knows so watch out for the video coming up of what else i got in that hole i got tons of stuff some really good stuff so i was really pleased with that okay what should we do now let's go on to uh this Ooh, i'm on the wrong page again <laughs> and bear with let's go on to this So at the moment we look at my bird book and today we're going to look at moor hens. Now the first time I came across a moor hen was I was in 
Gunton Hall. Does anyone know that? I think that's Suffolk it comes under. Uh, may not be a toy then. No, I don't know. It may be. Who knows? Um, yes, Gunton Hall. I think that was in Suffolk. It was a holiday place and they had a big lake and they had more hens there. I always remember they're the ones who sort of nod like this when they swim. So it's saying more hens. The more hen is the most often seen in parks where it stalks daintily across the grass around lakes. But a garden pond also entices. And if there's enough cover, a moor hen may even nest there. Watch for moor hens in trees. They are surprisingly agile and regularly roost on branches. Young moor hens of the first brood stay with their parents and help feed their younger siblings of the second. That's quite different. It has a red bill and a shield, which is absent in the young, a white line on flank and white feathers under their tails. So here's a picture of the moorhen. There is a moorhen there. It's a moorhen. Voice of a moorhen, a loud, sharp purr often gives away the moorhen's present. Toes of the moorhen. Moorhens fight fierce territorial battles with their feet and as a result can easily end up with broken toes. There's a fact. Feeding. The moorhen takes small animals such as worms and snails and fish and a variety of leaves, seeds and berries. On the bird table, put out bread and fat, but on the ground. A moorhen eats crust. Nesting. The nest is constructed from twigs and dead reeds among water vegetation, but also in hedges or trees and is lined with finer plants. The male gathers most of the material while the female builds the nest. If the water level rises during incubation, more material is added to lift the eggs clear. The chicks. A two-week-old moorhen finds its own food, but receives extra rations from its parents. Nesting information, April to August, two or three broods, five to eight dark spotted buff eggs, 21 to 22 days incubation, both sexes, 40 to 50 days fledging, and one to seven weeks until independent. So there's some interesting facts there for you on the birds. So we do another bird next time. And if you see my arm, <laughs> I had a big accident yesterday. I've got burn all down my arm, serious burn. So yeah, this isn't my sleeve. <laughs> oh dear. I talk more about that on Wednesday. But yeah, I've got serious burns on my arm. Oh dear, 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 dear. Okay, let's go on to this. Okay, so knacks, hacks, facts, etc., 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 etc. Ooh, this did go. Ooh, is that like ooh, or is that ooh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, silly me. So today I thought we would do some celery salad type tips. Celery salad type tips. So we have four today for first one. To improve salads, cut a garlic clove and rub the inside of the salad bowl with the cut surface. It gives a subtle garlic flavour. Tip two, to make celery curls, cut celery into two inch, five centimetre pieces, cut in thin horizontal strips, leaving cold water 30 minutes to curl. Number three, 
celery leaves dried on a cake rack in a very slow oven are ideal for flavouring soups and stews. And number four, lettuce and celery keep longer if stored in the fridge in paper. Do not remove the outer leaves until ready to use. And that's your tips from dawn today. Ah, uh, Shirley, she's doing her. Did you get my email, Shirley? I sent it to you back in your message. I sent you my email. Email. Okay. Let's go on to this. So what to watch on your coffee break and this month I'm asking you to go over to both my channels and check out the recipes. They both have playlists, they are both different recipes on both channels and they are frugal, easy, simple to do recipes using for me my homegrown stuff but for you if you don't grow anything very cheap affordable stuff. So check out the playlist on both my channels. Ah, Shirley saying, where did you send it? When you put, could you please send it? I replied and sent it. Uh, where would you like me to send it, Shirley? <laughs> Shall I send it direct to your channel? Would that be easiest for you? I won't be able to do it, obviously, uh, now. Uh, what's easiest? Because I know sometimes some of you guys um, can't pick up things if you watch it on the TV or something else. Uh, I can't put it in he here now because I haven't got anything up <laughs> where it is and I don't know it offhand. Uh, maybe next time I go on your channel, let me write down on my board to do it again. Shall I send it to your channel? Let's put, surely send my email. I'll send it again somewhere. I'll send it to your channel directly directly if you go to on this channel my very old lives i always put in the description my address my paypal and my email so don't look at recent ones because i don't do that anymore um so go back to those if you can't find it shirley i'll still send it to your channel uh probably when i go on probably tomorrow or the day after probably won't be online tomorrow um wednesday i will probably jump on your channel whatever your last video is i'll probably put it in there keep saying to me email not good oh oh my email is good <laughs> he good email <laughs> but yeah i'll send it again send it again Okie dokie. Don't worry, we'll get there, Shirley. We'll get there one way or another. Shirley's got seeds coming. They will come, Shirley. <laughs> oh, dear. They, they will come, Shirley. But as I say, go back to any of my old um, lives and on this channel, and it should be under my old lives. Before I use the thumbnails that I use now, so you'll see Monday has an, um, a thumbnail for lives, Wednesday has an email for lives. Before I did that, go back to those ones, because I think that was where I was on StreamYard. I switched to StreamYard, so um, I just do different thumbnails now, so I know when I started StreamYard. So go back to the old, old lives, and they should be in the description. <laughs> patient island girl uh, you're adorable okay let's go on to this.
So we're looking at my old 1970s gardening books. And this is what the author says you should be doing in your garden of week three of February. I know it's not week three, but it will be. There's no point me doing this week and you can't get out in your garden. So basically, um, this is week three. Shall we do the quick version? <clears throat> um, do you have greenhouses? Let's talk about first in the greenhouses, if you have greenhouses. Now, I don't have a greenhouse but I grow indoors. So to me, that's as good. And I also grow, you, you would have seen under a perspex sheet. So that is my greenhouse and that's outdoors. In the greenhouse, as the rays of sunlight get stronger and the days longer, plants in the greenhouse become increasingly restless for more attention, don't we all? Syringing and damping down are now becoming routine daily tasks strawberries in pots must be watched carefully and sufficient water given otherwise red spider mite and white powdery mildew will appear and the crops will suffer accordingly spraying overhead with clear water is especially useful in maintaining healthy plants and helps to ensure good fruit set i'm still getting strawberries yes <laughs> Greenhouse strawberries, apricots, peaches and nectarines usually set better crops of fruit if pollinated of the flowers is assisted by means of a small wad of cotton wool lightly dusted over the open flowers. Now I use earbuds, cotton buds, uh, gosh what do you Americans call them, q-tips, that's what you call them. It's like being multilingual trying to tell you your words. Citrus fruit such as oranges and lemons can be repotted or potted on this week. Prune back their shoots to improve the shape of the bush and stimulate it to produce side shoots. One of the main problems with seedlings in the greenhouse at this time of year is damp damping off, which is due largely to faulty ventilation. Open the greenhouse windows whenever the weather permits. Remember too to wipe off condensation on the inside of the glass so the amount of sunlight entering the greenhouse is not cut down. Overwatering and sowing seeds too thickly also tend to encourage damping off. If the problem persists, water the seed bed with some, um, well, they say chemicals. I'm not really into that. So just don't do it in the first place. As the new season advances, it should be possible to provide increasingly greater ventilation and do without heat completely on sunny days. From now until late spring, skill will be needed to manage the greenhouse and you will have to manipulate the ventilation and temperature with great care. Remember too that there can be sudden and considerable drops in temperature at night. Tomatoes are particularly susceptible to damage from low night temperatures, whether they are seedlings or young plants, and exposure to cold at this time can result in missed first truss later or a crop which is little earlier than an unheated one. And basically, February week three, your vegetables, you should be harvesting Brussels sprouts, Cabbage, including savoys, celery, heading broccoli, winter cauliflower, Jerusalem artichoke, kale, leek, parsnip, salsify, scorzona, spinach, spinach beet, sprouting broccoli, sea cow beet, turnip, hardy varieties, also turnip greens, swede and winter radish. Now is the time you can be planting or sowing broad beans, carrots under a cloche, Jerusalem artichoke, onion and garlic sets in warm gardens, parsnip, pea and shallot. That's your lot, shallot. <laughs> Fruit, you can now be planting apples, figs, medlars, nuts, outdoor grapes, pears, quince, stone, bush and cane fruits. 
you should be pruning apples, gooseberries, pears, autumn fruit in raspberries. You should pot or repot citrus fruit under gra grass, under <laughs> glass. Mm -hmm. Check for birds and mice of all fruit and feed top and soft fruits. In your greenhouse, you should be able to harvest carrot, chives, French bean, lettuce, mustard and cress, radish, also false chicory, rhubarb and sea kale. You can now sow in your greenhouse cabbage, early summer varieties, cauliflower, early summer varieties, carrot, corn salad, like lamb's lettuce, cucumber, other lettuce, mustard and cress, marrow, onions in cloches, radish, spinach in cloches. Transplant or prick out cabbage, cauliflower, chicory for forcing, lettuce, onion and tomato in heated greenhouse. Yay! Only made one big boo-boo there under your glass or under your grass. Hmm. <laughs> oh, let's now do um, this. So this is the update for Steve. <laughs> because you've been away um the update of my bike embroidery i contacted the company oh quick backstory if you're listening you don't know what i'm on about i'm new to embroidery i got gifted from a viewer an embroidery of a bike and i was doing it and steve was watching my progress and let me know that the whole saddle area situation it was wrong and basically um he's been helping me out with that um okay <laughs> and he's been helping me out trying to send me how it should be my poor little brain and i said i would also contact the company and i've done that i got a um message back first of all I explained all what we've been talking about how it's wrong they came back and said what you can do is trace it flip it and basically rub the pencil on the tracing paper and it would be that way I said yeah we've talked about that it's not just that it's the fact also if you just turn things around the uh, let's say just the saddle for example it's got a thin bit a thick bit if you flip it then you've still got the background of where it's wrong, the thick bit that you'll now make the thin bit. So I sent that back to her. She came back again and really bless her. She's trying. And she sent me a screenshot how the saddle, she's traced it, flipped it. She's done it because I sent her a picture of my product and she's used that and take a picture of it on screen she's flipped it and she said she actually made the saddle bigger so in that respect it will cover it and i said yep it's not just the saddle it's all the other areas in that section we were talking about she hasn't come back again since um i said you'll still see other bits and it's not all right so i haven't been on a computer since i sent that back so i will update you if anything else comes i did go on that site to see what sort of other stuff they sold hoping they sell we give you a voucher and you can get some more bits or something but as i was saying in my last wednesday live it looks like they're not selling anything much anymore there's literally a handful of items let's say 20 items maximum there's no kits there's no thread it's almost like they sold everything off and these are the last few tools and bits and pieces that no one wanted to stock because there's not a single kit, no threads, none of your basic stuff there. So I was thinking, oh, they've just got a last few bits they got left online. So I thought I'm not going to get anything from it. Uh, but she did reply. So I will uh, send you all that. <laughs> so I'll let you know if there's any more. Come back on that. 
Okay, let's go on to this. So, last Monday, we were talking about the Greek gods, which is a very important part of um, historical um, customs and whatever else and um, history and things of Cyprus as well is the Greek gods and all the stories of them. So I'm reading you little bits of that. So I'm continuing. If you want to know more, you can watch the last live. And don't forget these little intro bits between each section I show you. It's also so that if you like a particular section, like now I'm saying, if you want to know more, go back and watch this part last week. You can look for that little picture, fast forward through my life, find the picture of what we're doing, the all about Cyprus bit. When you see that, pause, watch the bit you want and off you go. If you like the gardening section and you're not interested in anything else, look for that little intro bit fast forward you'll see that little intro and just play that bit so i'm here for you guys i'm not saying watch every second of everything i do if there's a segment you really like and that's what you're interested in then fast forward go through all the lives fast forward i don't necessarily do every segment every week there's too many but there's the main ones that I do do most weeks. So if you're interested in the Greek gods, if you know someone that's studying them, this would be very helpful to them too. So go back to last week was the first one of this. Okay, let's see. Olympus, where the immortals lived, was thought to be the highest mountain in the world. Of those gathered there, Zeus, Hermes, Poseidon, Ares, Apollo, the, the greatest gods, Athena, Hera, Artemis, Aphrodite, Hestia, Dementa, and the most uh, revev, revev of the goddesses. Under the sovereignty of Zeus, these 12 were the highest rank. Others, such as Helios, Leto, etc., were next important. Pan, the shepherd god, was associated more with the countryside than with Olympus. Hades, Zeus's brother, would certainly have been an addition to the 12 principal gods, but he rarely, if ever, came to their mountain home. He was content to live in his kingdom far beneath the earth, ruling over the shades of the dead in the underworld. Life on Olympus was good. The gods spent a good deal of time in the banqueting halls, feasting on the flesh of sacrifices made to them by mortals on the earth below and drinking nectar from the golden goblets filled to the brim by lesser gods and goddesses such as Hebe, etc., who played the role of the courtiers. While they ate and drank, Apollo would fill the air with music from his lyre and the nine muses muses would sing more sweetly than any mortal could imagine. Often, however, one or other of the gods would be absent from the reverie, for they loved nothing better than to travel the earth and play a part in the lives of men. Many of the mortal heroes would have met untimely death if a god or goddess had not been watching over them and given help when it was needed. In these adventures, the gods often took risk. However, the fact that they were immortal gave them great advantages. They could be wounded by a sword or spear, but the wounds quickly healed. For a fluid with remarkable quantities flowed in their veins of blood, and they could, of course, change themselves at will into another form in order to achieve their purpose. Normally, however, the gods took human form so they could move about undetected. So I hope you enjoyed that. I just put Mark where I'm up to. <laughs> there, up to there now. Uh, so we can continue with that another time. So let's go and have a look at the comments. Let me see. Not me. 
<laughs> oh yes, because that's about the goddesses. <laughs> oh dear, not me. That's quite funny. Okay, let's go on to this. Okay, I have one for you today. Let's get rid of that. I still use these old ones. Do you remember I used to show you, instead of playing the intros, I used to show you one and tell you what it was. I still use them because the intros down the side are numbered and I just look at the number that I've written on the back to know which one it is. So I'm still using them. Nothing is wasted in my world. And that's why sometimes you'll see me playing around with the disc. I'm like, oh, what number do I need now? Okay, so I have one for you. My father-in-law, Lord Mountbatten, arrived in Malta to film scenes for the television series, which was then being produced about his life. A reporter from the local radio station met him at the airport and said, Lord Mountbatten, I understand that you have come to Malta in connection with a television series entitled The Life and Times of Lord Mountbatten. My father-in-law replied, yes, that's the case. And the reporter said, may I ask you, Lord Mountbatten, what part are you playing in the film? <laughs> it gets worse. My father-in-law was enormously amused by this question but was even more astonished when later that evening he heard the interview broadcast without this question being deleted. <laughs> oh, so that was deliberate, wasn't it, by the editor? <laughs> oh, Steve's laughing at that one. <laughs> okay, let's go on to this. Okay, we're going to do today a new game. I want you to put as many as you can think of. Things in a supermarket beginning with the letter C. Things in a supermarket beginning with the letter C. And let's see how many we can come up with. You can be funny, you can be serious, and it doesn't just have to be food or things on the shelves things in a supermarket beginning with the letter c you can keep your own score if you like there's no right or wrong answers <laughs> if it's uh, something that really would be there keep your own score and let's see who gets the most so we have steven tina cat food steven tina cabbage keep your own scores how many you're getting uh Ganja says carrots, cakes, corn on the cob. Oh, I'm going to give you double points for corn on the cob. You can have double points. That's four there. Four for you. Uh, carrots is Steve. Chocolate says Steve. Cupcakes. Oh, you've got a double C there again, Ganja. You can have two points for that. <laughs> uh, cream says Steve. I'm going to say children. Oh, my gosh. Children. I'm going for the non-foods. Children. Cashier, cash, <laughs> checks. Do you do you have checks still in your countries? Cauliflower says ganja. Mm, coats. People wearing coats. <laughs> uh, what else? Credit cards. <laughs> Coke. I hope that's the drinking variety. Ganja. <laughs> uh, clipboards. They go round, don't they, checking what's on the shelves, clipboards. <laughs> sorry, what are you sorry for? <laughs> what are you sorry? Um, um, they still sell cigarettes in uh, in uh, what they call supermarkets. <laughs> uh, 
um coins you have to put do you put in your country coins in the slot in the trolley you don't call it trolleys what do you call them you don't call them trolleys carts oh there we go there's the c carts you have to put the coin in and then you've got the trolley comes away they're all chained together and then when you go back you have to get your coin back uh yep siggies you asked me about cauliflower i missed what you asked oh <laughs> uh yep siggies candles cups chicken um chili cheese yes one one pound oh yes pound <laughs> as is one euro because that's the coin like your pound coin um what else cards do they sell cards coffee Ooh, you're all very good at this um clothes people are wearing clothes <laughs> cans Ooh, lots of those l cards what's an l card l cards okay <laughs> Cheerios, very good, like that one. That's an American thing, Cheerios. I guess you guys get a lot of the American stuff now. Uh, what else? Uh, cherries, cherries. Uh, I think someone said cheese. Did someone say cheese? I'm sure someone said cheese at the beginning. Let's see. No, I don't think everyone said cheese. Ooh, cheese. Cheese grommet. No, I don't see cheese. Oh, there's cheese. Stephen Tina. Cheese. Checkers. Cheerios crab. That's a good one. Cod. Cod. <laughs> uh, cookies. Crisp. Now, I call them crisp chips you call them chips most of you some of you call them chips cod steve did ah cool um i don't know if you your supermarket sell odds and ends household stuff so you could have like cotton cloths um candles can you buy candles candles uh coho coho i'm just oh cocoa i'm guessing you're saying cocoa cocoa i'm guessing chandelier of course <laughs> yes um oh we're slowing down now we're slowing down uh Mm. coho salmon don't know that don't know what that is is it a type of salmon never heard of that steve um what else uh, red salmon red salmon okay so red salmon learn something i love learning things in my lives love learning things okay let's go on to another one let's do let's keep the letter c today let's do the letter c uh types of transport beginning with c types of transport beginning with c <laughs> types of transport beginning with c coach says Stephen tina car says Stephen tina and ganja i must tell you all i've mentioned it before sometimes i get a comment but then I get another one above it jumps in. So I think it's when you send it, it comes in the right order. But I don't always receive it in the right order. So just to let you know, if I kind of miss your one, I have seen it. It jumps in after. 
Oh, chauffeur, says Ganja. City bus. That's a good one, Steve. Steve and Tina. Caravan is a vehicle. It moves. Cycle. Yes, Steve and Tina. Um, what else? Hmm. Camper, yes, camper vans, very good. If you're just joining us, we're doing vehicles. The other thing, pardon me, types of transport beginning with C. Types of transport beginning with C. Uh, let's think. What about those caterpillars? You know, those big um, vehicles, can you call them Caterpillars or is that a brand where they have the great big tyre things? Caterpillars, can you call it that? Uh, this one's quite hard, actually. Uh, like the old stagecoaches, uh, cab, <laughs> what about cab? Cab, <laughs> have to bend the words a little bit. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I think that's possibly it. We're a bit stuck on that one. Okay, let's do. Stay with the letter C. It's going to be hard. Camel car. Oh, excellent. Good one, says Ganja. So we stay with the letter C. This is going to be hard. Shapes. Shapes. Beginning with C. Shapes. Oh, Chevrolet. Well done, Ganja. That's excellent. Cargo ship. Oh, we're still going. Well done, Steve and Tina. Cargo ship. Excellent. Now you can carry on with this. Conical. Oh, what about Concord? <laughs> Carrier. Cruise ship. Look, we're going again now. Uh, this is a good workout for those of you who it's your morning. This is a good brain uh, warm-up for the day. <laughs> Ganja, I believe you're two hours behind me. So if for me now it's about... Um, this clock isn't quite right. It's about half past six here. So I think it's half past four for you, if I'm right, Ganja. Something like half past four. I think it's half past four for Ganja. I think it's morning for Steve and Tina. They're just getting warmed up. Right, we're doing shapes. Ganja says circle. Ah, oh, I'm right. Yeah, I thought I was. Do you know, Ganji, exactly two hours. So whatever your time is, I said so, so my clock's wrong here. So whatever time I am, I mean, exactly, exactly, exactly two hours ahead of you. Exactly. Nearly dog walk time. I won't be here much longer because it's Mike's birthday today. So we have finished this one today because I do want to be with him for the evening. Circles, C, circle, shapes, curve, ha, curve. Um, oh, crane, Steve's still on the vehicles. Crane, excellent. I know, laugh out loud, my fans read. <laughs> um, oh, I did think of one then. What did I think of? Cube, that's a shape, cube, there. <laughs> uh, uh yeah cube that's a shape curve cube we've done circle uh ooh, it's a hard one family oh yes of course yes family family um yeah i'm hoping to have some of you guys come over this year so if any of you want to come over I can't feed you, but I can give you accommodation as long as we've got no one else staying here when you want to come. Cylindrical. Gosh, look at you go, Gan. <laughs> Cylindrical. Excellent. Oh, I think actually that one needs a clap. Does it not? I think that 
that is very good so let's give you the special clap Tina have just done just done coil coil as well that's a pretty clever one well done <laughs> go now oh can just say hey hey thank you circulate says Stephen tina cone was the the clap for cone circuits yep they're all shapes for sure aren't they that's amazing that's really good that's really got your brains going hasn't it <laughs> okay guys i'm going to leave it there for today as i say it's mikey's birthday so i want to go and spend the evening with him we've been out all day together but you can't leave someone on their little birthday can you no so i'm going to love you and leave you as always i thank you so much for being here really appreciate it we'll talk more about the burn on the wednesday so look out for that exciting bit of news how i burnt my arm <laughs> oh god just i surprised myself thank you oh steve's still going capsule excellent Thanks, still No, thank you. Oh, I'll say happy birthday to him. I certainly will, Ganja. Yeah, as I say, if any of you guys want to come and visit at all, I can't feed you, but I can give you accommodation as long as no one else is staying here at the same time. Oh, cakes as well. I made him have a cake today. <laughs> so he had a cake. Okay, so I'm going to finish there. As I say, if you do want to come, my email, as I was saying to Shirley at the beginning, Ask me for it if you haven't got it, if you can't find it. But go to my old lives, the first few lives on this channel. And it should be in the description under most of those. And that's the best way to contact me. So that's definitely the best way to contact me. And then we can talk sort of private a bit more so people don't know when you're leaving your own homes <laughs> if you would love to come and be on my live while you're here you could do that but it's not um essential <laughs> and who is going to be i was going to say the first person to visit i've had now four visits from people that have seen me on youtube but i haven't yet had kind of what I call my more long-term people that constantly in my chat and stuff as in everyone knows who they are kind of ones so yeah thanks for being here much love to you all if you haven't had your day yet have a wonderful one if you had had your day yet I hope it was a good one see you soon thanks for supporting my channel mm -hmm.